Welcome to the Law School Insider, where we have conversations with students, lawyers, and employers. Succeeding in law school is something that you must prepare for, not only before you begin, but throughout your law school journey, and that's what this podcast is all about. I am your host, Dr. Christopher Lewis, and I will draw from my over 20 years of experience in the college admission field, as well as bring forth the experiences of others as we delve deeper into the issues. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Law School Insider. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Lewis, and I'm so excited to be able to have you back again this week. Now, I know we've been talking about a lot of different topics over over the last few years now, and one of the topics that comes up over and over again from people that I talk to is about applying to law school. And, you know, we've talked about this a long time ago. I think it was one of our first episodes that we ever had. But I wanted to bring someone on, be a expert in this area, to be able to talk about this a little bit further, and we're going to have a little bit of a conversation about what you need to be thinking about, what you need to be doing to apply to law school these days. Today, we have a great guest, Brianne Myers, who is the Director of Admissions at Western Michigan University Cooley Law School, is joining us, and she is going to be sharing with us some of her some of her tips, hints, resources, things that you can do to be able to get through that admission process, to be able to, to be able to be considered and be able to move forward with your own law school dreams. So, Brianne, thanks so much for being with us this week. Hi, Dr. Lewis. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. It is our pleasure to have you here this week, and I am so excited to be able to talk to you about this whole process because I know it can be very confusing and it can be kind of daunting for people as well. So to start off today, let's talk a little bit about the process in general, and let's kind of walk from the very basic of what someone needs to do to be able to be considered for pretty much any accredited law school, and then we'll go a little more in depth from there. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Lewis. One of the first things that I think people think about and they may have heard about when they're applying to law school is that they're going to need to take the law school admissions test or the LSAT. And I would say one of the first things that prospective students should be thinking about is how they're going to prepare for that test. It's only given four times a year. So it's a decision that you need to make at least a few months ahead of time so that you can register for it because they do have very strict deadlines. And you also really need to take the time to prepare so that you're going in and you're giving yourself the best opportunity to really score at your potential, which is going to open up more doors for you in terms of hopefully law school offers and maybe also scholarships. In terms of how you prepare, that's really an individual choice. I've seen students prepare very successfully by using different preparation courses, and I've seen students do very well with preparing using resources like the books that you can go into any bookstore and get. There's just so many different opportunities out there on the market. You can really choose, you know, whether you want, if you're going to take a course to learn from someone who's scored very highly on the test, or maybe somebody who has more of a teaching background. And those may not always be the same people. So you can really do your research, find out what's important to you. But in any case, in all cases, I would say you really need to take a lot of time with the material, doing practice questions, understanding why the right answers are correct, and also understanding why the wrong answers are wrong. And then once you get through that process, then you really need to work on your speed because the LSAT is designed to be uncomfortably fast. And so how well you can accurately answer the questions as well as quickly move through them will really determine your score. Now, I think that's a really important thing to start with because uh, we've talked about the LSAT before and sometimes that can be a stumbling block for anybody that's trying to apply to law school. And it definitely takes some time. And I, I've said this multiple times that whenever you're thinking about law school and you're thinking about taking the LSAT, you've got to take the time to be able to prepare well. And I appreciate you sharing that. Now, do you recommend any specific types of learning parameters or learning uh, mechanisms for someone on the LSAT? I know that you've taken the LSAT in the past, and um, I didn't know if you specifically share anything in that regard. I personally prepared for the test using the prep books, and I had a variety of prep books, and I really 
spent my time working through them. You know, I read through the section on tips and strategies and understanding how the test is scored. And then I would do practice questions. And again, I would read why is the right answer right and why is the wrong answer wrong. And then I would spend a lot of time working through practice questions and then eventually moving to timed conditions to improve my speed. So I thought that all of those things were very helpful. I have friends who've used courses and they really appreciated the structure of having a set time that they were going to be held accountable to in terms of, you know, showing up for study time and having somebody else proctor their exam and then having somebody else give them feedback. So I think it really depends on, you know, you personally, your learning style. For me, a large factor was my budget. At the time in undergrad, I had, number one, a lot going on. And so in terms of time, I didn't have a very flexible schedule for availability. And so I the books were the most flexible choice in that regard, but it was also the most economical choice for me at the time. And so I was happy with the score that I earned, but certainly the prep courses do wonders for people too. Someone gets through the LSAT, they get the score, hopefully that they want, and now they're ready to move forward with their application. Now, some people think or ask the question, can I apply before I take the LSAT? But others will wait until afterwards. So what are the steps after you take the LSAT to be able to get into that system, the credential assembly service, and be able to move forward with that to be able to then be considered by a law school for admission? The Law School Admissions Council, LSAC.org, that's the website that students will go to to sign up for the LSAT. But then there's another component on that site of the credential assembly service, and that is a great resource. And that's something that almost all students are going to have to use, particularly if they were educated in the U.S., to have their undergraduate transcripts evaluated. So students will want to sign up for the LSAT on LSAC.org, and then they will also want to sign up for this credential assembly service. And then the, the students will have to contact each school that they previously attended and order a transcript from that school directly to CAS for evaluation. And then LSAC does an evaluation of the undergraduate coursework, and then they'll send that to each law school that the student later applies to. And students can actually apply to law schools through the lsac.org website. It's also a great option for exploring schools. You can look for schools with different parameters, including geography, to figure out which law schools might be out there and which law schools you might want to apply to. And then you can file your application through there and order your credential assembly service report to be sent to the schools. Now, are there any stumbling blocks along the way that you typically see with students when they're going through that CAS, the Credential Assembly Service process, that could be avoided if they worked ahead of time or if they worked in a different way? I think one thing that's really important is just to start the process early because it can take a few weeks from the time you request your transcript until it's submitted and evaluated and then release to the school. So I think starting the process early and really thoroughly reading the website to understand the fees that will need to be paid and the process, I think that having that knowledge is really helpful to avoiding pitfalls down the road if someone might have a holdup because they forgot to pay a report fee or they sent in one transcript but not the transcript where they, you know, maybe attended community college over a summer to pick up an extra course. So I think that having that awareness and starting the process early is the best advice that I have as far as that goes. So it sounds like one of the things that you definitely have to be aware of, because I I heard you talk about community college. So it's not just your undergraduate degree that we're considering, but it's also everything that goes into that undergraduate degree. So not just the last institution that you attended where you get the degree from. So it's important that when you are applying you're putting down your schools on your application, that you put down all of those schools to make sure that it comes through, not only to the school, but it, because it is going to come through through the evaluation that the LSAC will will have for the schools as well. And you don't want to come across as withholding information in that regard as well. Now, I know that there may be some other things that may be issues for students once that application has been submitted. And what are some of the biggest issues that you see with applications? Once they're submitted, you get them, and they're waiting for that magic accept. Are there specific things that you see that sometimes hold up that application on your end? Usually, as long as the law school report is ready from LSAC, that 
is one major hurdle. Then if the law school requires any additional documentation, like if there are any character and fitness issues, applicants always want to make sure that they're checking for correspondence from the law school in case anything additional has been requested. A lot of law schools will require letters of recommendation or personal statements or resumes or certainly encourage those items to be submitted. And sometimes students will wait to get all of those items in. So that's another reason to really start this process early so that you can take the time of identifying key recommenders and really spend time to write a quality personal statement that's well written and that conveys what you want to convey to the law school. So I think timing is a big issue. But again, if you start this process early enough and you're organized, it's very easy to check things off incrementally over a few months as you're going through the process. Now, I know you just mentioned the idea of letters of recommendation, personal statements, and some law schools do require those and then some law schools don't. So it's really important that when you are applying to law schools that you look at the law school and what they do require. But is there any downside that you see for, a, let's say, a law school that doesn't require the letters of recommendation or the personal statements that they still submit those. I think unless your recommender has something unfavorable to say about you, which hopefully you're choosing recommenders who are going to have really positive things to say, I don't think that there's any downside of including that additional information. It helps the admissions committee have a more clear picture of who you are and what you care about. And a big part of the law school admissions process for both the school and for the individual is finding the right fit. And so I think letting more of your personality shine through and more of the causes that you're passionate it about and your experiences, I think that's a valuable thing for the committee to see. And I think applicants, they want to convey that to the school. They want the school to know what their goals are and, and what brought them to this point and about the work that they've done so that these recommenders who are often very busy faculty members really want to take that time out of their day to write a really strong letter about this person's growth and academic achievements. Now, are there any other hints, tips, resources, things that you might share with someone today to be able to help them to be able to better get through this process? I mean, you've shared a ton already, but are there any final thoughts that you want to share with people? I would say my final thought would be make sure that you take advantage of the resources that are available to you. If you are still in undergraduate school, you're probably going to have access to a pre-law advisor who's just an absolute wealth of information. There may be LSAC forums in a city nearby where you can go speak to representatives from almost all of the law schools. There may be a law fair on campus. And I think just making sure that you take advantage of those resources is really important. And a pre-law advisor could be someone from a career services office. It could be an academic advisor. It could be a professor in various departments on campus. But I would also say, even if you've already graduated, reach back out to your undergraduate school and see what kind of resources they may have for you to help prepare you for applying to law schools and just take advantage of all of the resources that are out there. But also remember everything that you've learned in undergrad about doing diligent research and getting your information from good sources if you're going to turn to the internet to do some of that research. So don't just use the internet, use the other resources that are available to you. Great insights today. I really appreciate you sharing that and being with us. We'll definitely have to have you back on again in the future. And I really appreciate your time today and for you sharing all of the information that you shared. Thank you so much, Dr. Lewis. Well, that was another great guest this week on the Law School Insider. If you have an interest in being a guest on the show, drop me an email at lawschoolinsider at cooley, C-O-O-L-E-Y dot E-D-U. And thank you all for listening today. And remember, you have the ability and right to take control of your law school's success. I hope you'll continue listening, creating a plan for success that will prepare you to achieve the dreams that you have set for yourself. Talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. You're on your way to being a law school insider. Please subscribe to stay connected and come back again next time as we speak to more students, lawyers, and employers. Thank you.